Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRoad.com. What's your morning, Horn of Z's? Your sip of coffee. Um, silver, let's talk silver. Thanks for the great feedback yesterday uh, about posting the Cliff High interview in its entirety. He does talk about silver um, changing properties and what we understand how silver can move electricity and how it moves on the outside of the silver, not on the inside. Stuff like that. Check out the interview. I can't explain it, but uh, in his data from way back, that was the impetus for the silver moonshot. So I, that's the other thing. How long will a silver moonshot last? I don't know. The, what I do know is that the price of silver right now under $15 is not the real price of silver. It's not a fair market value price of silver. I can't tell you what that fair market value price of silver is. Because it hasn't been freely traded, and it is 100% controlled and manipulated. And here's the last 20 years. This is how long I've been in silver and what I've had to deal with. I did expose it. Many of us exposed who's doing the rigging in silver and gold. Uh, I give it down to the person. Vincent Viola of EWT LLC back then um, was a large participant. Yes, it's the same guy that Trump... Uh, nominated for the head of the U.S. Army, which is crazy. You know, what's going on behind the scenes with Trump? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a little of both. Dancing with the devil and uh, putting people in place who can keep the system going. Obviously, the stock market is rigged every trade, every day. That's how the economy turned out so well. Oh, by the way, uh, Ruta was on, I mean, Alan Greenspan was on speaking uh, just yesterday about um, the real GDP is really doing so well because of the stock market. It's uh, was it uh, stock market goes up ten percent, GDP is going to go up one percent. So obviously, what do you do? You rig the stock market. You hire Steve Mnuchin, the computer market rigger from Goldman Sachs, to rig the stock market every day. It's that easy with computers and derivatives. Um, but interesting that that uh, Greenspan came on uh, CNBC, I think, and was talking about. Things are not good. And very short term, they're fine. Medium and long term, we're screwed. Who would say something like, like that? Ruta would. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, this has been crazy. The whole 20 years has been crazy. Uh, even since they put it on lockdown in 2014, basically the last five years of silver has been locked down between 15 and $20. You're not allowed to know anything else. <laughs> even though J.P. Morgan trader... Busted for rigging the market, said he was told to do it and forced to do it by his, not forced, he was trained how to rig the markets from his management, which was Blythe Masters and Jamie Dunn. So, if you don't know anything about silver trading, let's look at some volumes because they'll just make you sick. Every year, about eight to 900 million ounces of silver is mined out of the ground, with most of that being consumed, meaning put into electronics and solar panels and silverware and mirrors and high-tech equipment and your cell phone, um, over 50% of it is consumed. Consumed, meaning, meaning it's broken into such little pieces, it'll never come back again. Maybe at $20,000 silver, we might start trying to recycle out of the uh, garbage dumps around the world. But it's still, you know, finding that microscopic you know, tenth of an ounce in a computer and melting it out and getting it out. Whatever, you you know, any way you slice it is uh, good news for the price of silver, if it's ever freely traded. But let me show you how it's not freely traded. This is the CME, the comics, which is futures and options. There's only two, ex well, this is the only exchange on planet Earth, really, for silver. Um, they don't have a, a physical exchange. The LBMA, the London Bullion Market Association, is supposed to be that physical exchange, but it's not even an exchange. It's an association where a small group of people, J.P. Morgan included, tell the world what the price is. And I'll get to that one in a second, but let's just look at volumes. So we have 800 million ounces coming out of the ground, and some people need to hedge that. Absolutely. Hedging is understandable. Um, if you're a, a, a processor or a, a mining, yeah, you know, the hedging the stuff in the ground, not a good idea. Just ask Barrick. <laughs> and not many companies do that at all. So I, I'll just keep that out of it. So who would hedge uh, the people, you know, financial players, the market makers and all that bullshit? There's not really a lot. Uh, Jeffrey Christian said, 
about 3 billion ounces have to be hedged every year in the silver market. And I think that's outrageous even to claim. But even at 3 billion ounces, what's all this other stuff, all this other crap? And it's a hell of a lot more than 3 billion ounces worth of silver derivatives are traded every year. So, no. And most of those hedges, you know, when you put on a hedge and you're a, um, say, a processor of, of silver and you're hedging your inventories, every time you bring something in and take something out, you're not closing out hedge, hedge positions because you got a constant flow of in and out. You're not closing all your positions and starting new positions. Um, so the volumes are ridiculous. And let's look at the volumes right here over uh, over April. You can see right here it's uh, uh, 800 to like here's a, on April 11th. What happened on April 11th? 134,816 contracts traded hands in one day. And each contract is 5,000 ounces. So let's take a look. 134,816. Times 5,000. On that specific day, 684 million ounces of silver <laughs> traded hands, which is insane. Silver derivatives. Insane that that is allowed. That is called market manipulation. Nobody in their right mind, not even traders, would need to dump 674 million ounces on the exchange. But if you look at the average, about 100,000. So let's just say 100,000 uh, contracts. This is per day, mind you. This is per day, 250 trading days in a year approximately. So let's go 100,000 contracts times 5,000, which is the number of ounces. This is about a half a billion ounces trade every day times 250 Trading days, oh, what was that, half a million <laughs> per day? Okay, um, 250 is 125 billion, with a B, billion ounces of silver. <laughs> remember, remember what they take out of the ground every year, total. 800 million, and we're talking 125 billion ounces on the comics gets traded. And that's just one of the two exchanges. Let's look at the other ridiculous exchange. Here's the LBMA. Look at their still. Now, these are average, daily averages right here, daily averages. So look at that. All last year, we're looking at average probably between two and 300 million. Million right here, million ounces of silver was supposedly net transferred. That's the thing about the LBMA. The gross transfer, according to JP Morgan's trader, is three times the net. So, whatever numbers they give you here, you got to three times them. Let's just say on the LBMA, they trade an average of two. Let's see, 2018 looks like probably an average of 220. 220 million per day. Now remember that's net, so gross is going to be 600 million, right? So gross is times three. 600 million times 250 trading days is 150 billion ounces traded, <laughs> traded, exchanged, actually, they call them transfers, transferred on the LBMA. 150 billion ounces on the LBMA even though they only mined out of the ground 800 million ounces. And they're trying to tell you that the LBMA is a physical market. <laughs> so yeah, there's right there, there's what? Uh, I, didn't even, I forgot the first number. It was somewhere around 300, 300 billion, with a B, ounces, representative ounces of silver derivatives trade every year. 300 billion, just on these two exchanges. Now you have all your other... Silver derivatives, the OTC market, the uh, silver uh, pooling programs, um, SLV, which is a ridiculous, ridiculous concept that uh, they don't put that. There's there's short positions on SLV, which means when you buy an SLV share, you're, they're supposed to put silver in 
in trust to J.P. Morgan. Why is why is J.P. Morgan still the trustee of the BlackRock controlled SLV when they have a trader, a, a, a commodity trader who has pleaded guilty to rigging the market? BlackRock is seriously, seriously um, messing with their fiduciary responsibility to put someone who's not going to be rigging the silver market as the custodian. But they can't get them out because they know it's rigged too. And BlackRock is knee deep in this game. So hopefully when this all falls apart, BlackRock will get uh, investigated along with JP Morgan and all the other silver riggers, Deutsche Bank and friends. All right. Here's, <laughs> here's an old article I posted. It was an email I posted probably... Uh, and it's still true to this day, which is annoying. It was in 2011 that was sent. And here's here's uh, here's what I said. I think it was to private room members at the time. I want to be clear on silver. I've had it, many emails lately about the silver price moves. I just want to make it clear to everyone where the silver price fits into the road to real theory. Here are a few issues that are important to understand as we ease into the chaos. Number one. Only physical silver in your possession will survive the global fiat monetary meltdown. That's absolutely true. I don't care how how upstanding the citizen is that is holding the metal for you. At the end of the day, the guards will be taking that silver out of the vault to feed their family. So you don't want to be anywhere near a third party and silver. Number two, using computer progr trading programs, they can place the price of Comex silver anywhere they want from zero dollars an ounce to infinity dollars so count your silver in ounces and not fiat money and we've seen that i mean this if this is 2011 that's eight years they've controlled it and held it in that one spot and it's that easy when you invented the computer trading models that control the price number three if there is another silver slam to coincide with the global market crash there will be no physical silver available for purchase at the lower prices. That's true. Um, yeah, all exchanges say we can we can do whatever we want. We can shut down, force majeure type of stuff. Number four, those looking for leveraged silver investments must understand that there's massive leverage in real physical silver as the bad guys have sold many times more physical silver than exists in the world. That's true. There's massive leverage. They've sold many, many times the amount of physical silver available. So all you got to do is grab as much physical as possible, hang on to it. And as the bad guys unwind their silver leverage, it purely goes into the physical side. That's if the, the criminal rigors get shut down, which I think they will. Um, number five, the new CFTC, new CFTC, that cracks me up. New CFTC is designed around a post-crash market regulation regimen and will not be the cause of silver chaos. So keep this in mind as they extend and delay any hard position limits that may cause havoc in the silver markets. I wrote that nine years ago and said exactly what has happened. Extend and delay. Um, so CFTC, <laughs> that's their job, is to run cover for the manipulation. Number six, the end of silver price manipulation will mean the end of all unbacked fiat monetary systems as control of silver and gold is 100% required for an unbacked currency system to exist absolutely if you don't control the price of gold and silver in, especially now with all these many many decades of price suppression um, you will destroy because it is highly levered because the derivatives were allowed to exist any spike of say 50 percent or 100 percent would destroy the banks with the short positions anybody with a silver short a gold short is insane at any moment, J.P. Morgan can click a mouse and boom, the price of silver goes from $15 to $150. And since they have over a billion ounces of silver, that's pretty good for them. They're going to try to get out of their short position, as Ted Butler has been documenting. They got out of it, but they had to get a little back on to keep the system going. So um, I do expect in the end, J.P. Morgan to com be completely out of the silver short position. And then uh, watch the chaos unfold. Number seven, an investment in real physical silver can change your stars in a way you had never dreamed possible. And you deserve to be rewarded <laughs> for all your years of pain. I think that's where we are. I think that uh, was where we are back then. The can was kicked. Obviously, Obama was no help. 
Bush was no help. Clinton, just going back, president after president. They, have, you know, even Reagan. You know, Reagan ran the Gold Commission, and he should have pulled the plug back then. The final conclusion of the Gold Commission was, uh, although there are people worried about inflation, um, we're not going to make any changes right now. But if in the future the gold bugs find that this gold is a a cure for the inflation problem, then we expect to revisit the gold subject. Well, that was before, unfortunately, for the gold bugs. That was before Bitcoin, the invention of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And when you look at cryptocurrencies as a form of money, now more than ever, Bitcoin shows that it's superior to gold. I know a lot of gold bugs still don't believe it, even after all these years. Their argument used to be, oh, no, it'll get hacked. Well, now we know it can't get hacked. We always knew it, but now the system is so robust, it can't get hacked. You can't hack Bitcoin. You can hack wallets. You can hack third-party custodians. You can hack, well, wallet passwords. You can't hack the wallet. SHA-256 is how they make those wallets. It's a um, one-way cryptography. So you can't really hack the wallets either. All these AI supercomputers, that's great. To hack one wallet is going to take years and massive amounts of money dedicated to just one wallet. That's why, hey, don't keep all your cryptos in one wallet. One day they might be able to crack that wallet, but at the same time, it takes years and years and years and massive amounts of money to crack one wallet. You know, put your, you know, 100 Bitcoin on 100 different wallets. Then they got to times it by 100. It's going to be another 100 years for them to crack it. Now, I don't think it, it'll get to that point before we, and, you know, we hit a point where we don't need money. And we will hit that point as techno- te- technology advances further and further into um, replication on the cellular level. And I think that's coming with, you look at the last 20 years of computer um, innovation and growth and you're, you know, who'd have thought 20 years ago, you know, in the in the year 1999, who'd have thought internet and um, the technology would be so highly advanced and adopted and adopted? You know, 20 years ago, you know, you're not going to search the, the web and find all this porn. You're not going to find all kinds of things. You know, it was still dial up. Remember that? Gee, 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 you got mail. <laughs> And 20 years later, look at us. You know, we think it, we think things are fast now and you can get inf- information, that, you know. Mind you, it, it, I've switched over from Google to DuckDuckGo. And the searches, when I search for something, it's night and day compared to what Google will give me. That's awesome. And I'm sure DuckDuckGo is, is at least to a point um, kind of watched over. But nothing, nothing like Google and YouTube and Facebook, those complete social engineering steering you to where they want you to go, not what you want to find, but what they want you to go. So I would say DuckDuckGo is a is a good move, and then you can go on to the dark web if you want and all that. A little more complicated, but DuckDuckGo is, is pulling up completely different uh, search results than Google. Amazing, huh? Okay, uh, also speaking of <laughs> conspiracy stuff, here's something they were trying to shut down was um, all kinds of questions about Notre Dame, especially like the, the 10 cathedrals that were vandalized in the last month. And here is something that I saw. I'm like, this is a pure setup. They show a guy in a yellow vest walking right after the fire was set, like half an hour walking in, in the upper part of Notre Dame. I'm like, first of all, with all those sirens, everybody would be out of the building half an hour later. Second of all, it just so happens, you know, what, what kind of terrorist organization would ye- wear a yellow vest? If it was a yellow vest movement, no, they're not going to wear a yellow vest. Anyway, check this video out. Right there. <laughs> so they've been showing it over and over again. Look, there's someone there. He's got a yellow vest on. Right? Can you, can you see the... Uh, the, the setup here, who knows what's going on. You know, I wouldn't put anything past Mark Crone and his band of merry henchmen. So bad news over in France. Keep fighting, guys. You're going to win in the long run. 
And if you want to be a winner, subscribe to RoadToRua.com. Da, da, da. Hit subscribe today. And if you heard the, the discussion with Cliff High, you'll know why Veritasium has the potential to go absolute moonshot at or above Bitcoin type of thing. And right now it's trading for like $14. And with every private orb subscription, I give one Veritasium token away on a paper wallet along with a silver coin. Yes, I do believe these things will pay off and have paid off. You know, if you've been on Road to Root long enough, when I was giving away Bitcoin, um, it wasn't a whole Bitcoin. I think it was $20 worth of Bitcoin. But, you know, it's back when, so what is it, say, like $500, $600 at $20 worth of Bitcoin I gave away with the subscription. So, yes, the Road to Root pays off, especially in the high points. <laughs> and don't expect me to tell you to sell when when uh, cryptos get over their skis, shall we say. They aren't right now, I don't think at all. But I'm not going to tell you to sell. I'm not going to tell you to buy on the low. Well, I, I tell you when I bought on the low. But the reality is only the hodlers are going to win um, in the end. And, and a hodler means you hold your assets in your own possession. These exchanges could shut down instantly. Uh, that's why it's so it's so dangerous to buy with fiat. Say you go on Coinbase and you're trying to get some Litecoin to put in your own possession, but there's a little lag time. They're not giving you your coins for two weeks, and you're like freaking out. It is so much easier today than it was before. Is all I got to say. Uh, back in the day, it was almost impossible to get Bitcoin unless you mined it yourself. Um, and then you know it got easier and easier. So much easier today. But it is risky if you have any uh, of your cryptos on an exchange. How can you tell if your cryptos are at risk? Ask yourself this question. Do you have your own private keys? Can you look at your private key right now and are the, you the only one who can see that private key? If that answer is yes, then you have your cryptos in your own possession. If that answer is no, then you do not. It's that simple. All right. That's all I got for you today. You guys have a good time. BigSquareRoadRoot.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thumbs up, baby. <laughs> Talk to you later.